Let's go on past omega, which is the set of the natural numbers put into a bag, and s of omega, which is that set plus the bag itself to get the next number. Let's go on to some bigger ordinals, and um, we'll lead into a little bit of ordinal arithmetic. So um, I'm going to stop calling it s of omega, because a more standard name is omega plus 1, and that's in anticipation of figuring out how to add ordinals. It's going to be very uh, interesting that it's not the same as 1 plus omega. And we'll see that below. We'll, we'll see some pictures about why that's true below. So what about the next one? We can always just take the successor. We can always do that. Take anything and take the successor. Um, so the successor of omega plus 1, OK, by definition, that's omega plus 1. And then we just union that with omega plus 1 put in a, put in a new box. So in other words, it's the set of 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot and then omega, and then omega plus 1. Now remember, the crucial way to make it precise, what do we mean dot, 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 infinitely, and then more, is the notion of the ordering. And so omega is bigger than every finite, omega plus 1 is bigger than every finite, and bigger than omega. And that's a well-defined ordering, and that we uh, are allowing ourselves to, to say that that really defines this as an ordinal number. And of course, we're going to call it omega plus 2. Okay? If you want to break it out pretty explicitly, in terms of just empty sets, braces, and commas, this is what it looks like. We've got zero, there's zero, and then you put zero in a box, and it's one. You put that in a box. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, I think I messed up. This needs another empty set here. That's two put in a box, and so in fact, let me fix that. Um, let's see, I'll put the mo's all in the right places. Okay. I think it's going to be right now. So there's 0, 1, 2, et cetera. And now I've taken that whole, notice I've taken that whole thing and I've put it into a box. That's omega. It's the set of that whole sequence. So here's a dot, dot, dot inside a box now. So here's a dot, dot, dot that's only inside the absolute outer level that defines the set we're talking about. Here's a dot, dot, dot that's actually inside some braces. And now here's all of that stuff that I just wrote, every single bit of it, but then put inside braces, okay? And so notice that um, the dot, dot, dots kind of get descended to deeper and deeper levels of the braces. And I think, uh, no, I think that's good. Yeah, so this one, for example, should be, yeah, this is inside double, even triple curly braces, I think. Yeah, triple, okay. So if you really must, oh, must see it that way, um, it's kind of cool. Um, you wouldn't want to write out anything more complicated this way, though. But it's interesting that uh, I think it, it is important to see it at least once, because remember, it's about patterns. This is about what we're trying to, I'm trying to emphasize here, um, making the transition between the explicit constructions and this idea of patterns of, of recursion. And the idea of doing something again, 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 continue, then jump out, and then summarize, kind of use a, a very clever method to jump out of the loop. Then do another loop, jump out of that loop. That's what we're going to be talking about. So omega plus 3, that's where we could go next. That's just 0, 1, 2, omega, omega plus 1, omega plus 2. And we can go on. Omega plus 4, omega plus 5, omega plus 6. Well, is there something after that? Well, of course. Omega plus omega. That should be just the limit of omega plus n. Well, what does limit mean? This is the great thing about this ordinal business, is we just throw them all together in the right order. So we just take oh, 0, 1, 2, all the way up. That's omega. And then we start over omega, omega plus 1, omega plus 2. And we just say dot, dot, dot. It's the set of all of those, those objects. And hopefully the order is obvious here, is that omega plus 2 is bigger than omega plus 1, is bigger than omega, bigger than any finite, etc. OK? So we could also call that omega 2, or well, if we want to break it out, omega times 2. It's going to be different from 2 times omega. OK, so there's some a, a very small selection of some bigger ordinals. And that lead, lead, leads us right into how would we look at our ordinal arithmetic in general. OK, so um, that's also going to tell us a little bit about a slightly more sophisticated way of thinking about these guys. So addition is you just put, you've got two ordered sets, two well-ordered sets. You just put them together in order. You take essentially the union, but you put everything in one after everything in the other. So that's going to give us a slightly different picture of what omega plus omega will be. And then we'll see that it really is the same thing. So we take omega, which is 0, 1, 2, et cetera, et cetera. Now we want to put it with itself. But the thing is, we don't want to just take the ordinary union. Because with sets, if you have 0 and 0 twice, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's just the same thing as 0 appearing once. 
So we're just going to put a little marker on the new copy of omega. So we'll say 0 prime, 1 prime, 2 prime, etc. Just any kind of arbitrary marker. Okay. It turns out that here we use the marker of omega plus that number. Okay. That's one way to do that. But here it's not actually that crucial to figure out what marker you actually use. So you just have one copy of omega and then another copy of omega. And then um, the rule is simply that if any prime comes after any non-prime. It's a well-defined method of ordering, and, so it, and it's easy to show that it finds a well-ordered set, and so it's exactly what we mean by an ordinal number. So um, the claim is that this is really the same as what we did here. Okay. Um, or sorry, right here, omega plus omega. Um, this, to say that any two of these guys are the same, we're not going to insist they be exactly the same ordered set. Let's be a little bit more um, flexible than that. We just need to know that there's a one-to-one -one order preserving correspondence between the two. So that I can say this zero corresponds to this guy, this one corresponds to this guy, and not less trivially, this zero prime, let's say that corresponds to omega. The one prime corresponds to omega plus one. The key is that the pattern is the same. There's the same, uh, I can make a, a identification of the elements of one set with another that keeps the order the same. So that two prime here comes after one prime and they come after any finite number here by the definition of the order for the, this plus. Similarly, omega plus two comes after omega plus one, comes after any of these finite here. And so if you have a one-to-one -one order preserving correspondence, basically that's the crucial thing. So, similarly, you could redefine omega plus 1 um, in this general notion of, of addition. Just take 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 and then just have another element in there, 0 prime. I'm going to put it at the end to try to suggest that it's um, in, in the order it comes after everything. But the main thing is just that if you question me about two elements, I can tell you, and the answer will be 0 prime is after anything else. And so that's going to be the same. It's kind of a more general version of this very specific model of what omega plus 1 would be. So this says, eh, this particular trick that we used of putting in a new element and specifically having it be omega itself, it's a very clever trick. It makes it really, really basic and doesn't require anything but just, you know, curly braces and, and commas. But, you know, even if you found some other weird way to label this new element, I don't care. As long as you tell me it's a new element and it comes after all the old ones, then it's going to serve as a good version of omega plus 1. Okay, where that is, is very handy is things like 1 plus omega. Okay, what would, should 1 plus omega be? Well, it should be some set with one element. Okay, let's say just the set with just 0. And then a copy of omega, but we want to put primes on them to distinguish it from this 0. Okay, so 0, 0 prime, 1, 2, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime. Now notice the pattern of the dot, dot, dots. It's all about where the dot, dot, dots go. They come after everything. It's just something, 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 dot, dot, dot. That seems suspiciously like just omega, just the natural numbers. And indeed it is. There is an order-preserving one-to-one correspondence. We're going to take this 0 to the 0 in this set. We're going to take 0 prime to 1, 1 prime to 2, and in general, n prime to n plus 1. And so, in fact, these really are, deserve to be called the same thing. So, in shorthand, we just say that 1 plus omega is omega. It hasn't actually changed it. That's kind of weird, right? Adding 1 to something and doesn't change it? Well, infinity is slippery stuff. Um, if anything, it's weirder that omega plus 1 isn't the same as omega. Um, but in the ordered version, 1 plus omega and omega plus 1 are very different. Okay. Um, so, let's see, where did I... Um, Somehow I lost my picture. Um, I had a nice picture of this. Um, and, um, oh, well, let's say, let's stop the video right here, and I will uh, put in the picture and start the new video in the next one.